Every designer, at least once in a day lifetime, faced a situation where they had two versions of the design and wasn't sure which version would work the best for users. There is a simple solution to this problem – A-B testing. In today's video we will cover the technique of A-B testing and learn how to apply it to the product design process. A-B testing, also known as split testing, is a technique that allows you to compare two proposed versions of a design and choose the one that performs better. And by performs, we usually mean converts. A-B testing is extremely valuable for product teams because it helps them learn how to uh, certain design decisions impact user behavior. A-B testing is applicable for almost all design decisions. For example, if we want to A-B test the landing page, we can test headlines, call to action buttons, or images. We can test everything that can change, can be changed. Of course, the fact that we can test everything doesn't mean that we should test everything. It's vital to focus on the design decisions that provide the maximum value for you and your users. A-B testing is a relatively simple procedure. First, we choose one variable. We will need to change only one thing in design. For example, it can be the color of a call to action button. If you make a few changes in a design, you won't be able to tell which element led to a change in conversion. Next, we randomly assign real users to see either version A or version B. Ideally, you should test both versions simultaneously. If you cannot do that, you need at least run each test to comparable periods. It's extremely important. Measuring version A performance during the weekend against the version B performance during the business week will be a huge mistake. It will be impossible to know whether a certain version performed better because of design differences or change in user behavior. Last but not least, we will measure user behavior to learn which version performs better. Before starting the A-B testing, we need to define the conversion goal. Goal is an action that we want the user to take on the page. For example, in the context of a landing page, the goal can be signing up for product updates. We should also know the baseline results, the current conversion rate, how users perform right now, how many visitors click on the sign up buttons right now. Now let's talk about some things you need to take into account while conducting A-B testing. Number one, test the right page and the right design element. You need to conduct A-B testing for the pages where users convert. If most conversions happen on the home page, then that's where you need to conduct user testing. You can use tools like Google Analytics to find key lead generator pages. Second, we need to understand which areas of the page get the most traffic and which one users ignore. We can use the heat map tools available in the Google Page Analytics or Hotjar to get this data. Number two, get the right sample size. The sample size is the number of users participating in testing. A-B testing is a quantitative method. It means that you select the winner based on the conversion rate, number of the users who completed a certain action. Thus, it's essential to choose the correct number of the users for testing. If you don't perform testing on enough users, your result will be biased, and you cannot rely on them in design. Calculating the sample size isn't easy, so you should use a special calculator for this task. I will leave a link to a sample size calculator in the description. Number three, give a test sufficient time. Not giving each test sufficient time is a typical problem that many products team face. When the time is not right, A-B testing will have a limited number of test participants and non-representative test results at the end of the testing period. The time for testing can be calculated based on two variables average daily visitors, numbers of unique daily visitors you, your tested page received, for example, 10,000, and total number of a screen page variations, for example, three versions of a landing page. It's a good idea to use those parameters as an input for A-B test duration calculator. 
This calculator will give you the number of days required for running the te uh, testing. Number 4. Do not modify design during testing. Introducing changes in design during the active testing phase is a, one of the most critical yet widespread mistakes that many product teams make. When you see that something in your design doesn't work in as expected, you might want to fix it right away, but making changes during the test will introduce bias in your results. You won't be able to tell whether or not your change affected the data. Number 5. Ask test participant to provide qualitative feedback. A-B testing is quantitative method. The testing can tell, can tell you which version A or B performs better, but it won't tell you why it performs better. To fill this gap, you need to reach out to test participants for qualitative feedback to get more detailed picture of user behavior. For example, you can send an email with a simple question such as please tell us what you think about our new design. Or you can invite people to interview sessions to learn more about their needs. Number 6. Consider the state of your product. The procedure of an A-B testing varies depending on the state of the product. There are two typical scenarios. First, when you don't have an established design. You design a new product and you have several ideas about the direction you want to take. And when you have an established design but want to try some new ideas. In the first place, you want to treat all ideas equally, so you most likely assign the equal weight traffic to each solution. In the second case, you might want to give your new page variants a smaller percentage of the traffic than an existing solution, say 60% of the traffic will go to the original design, while only 30% goes to the new variations. By doing that, you will minimize the risk that new design will cause problems to your users. Try to conduct A-B testing on a regular basis. The effectiveness of anything can change over time, and the results of A-B testing are not an exception. Depending on the nature of your product, you might want to include A-B testing in your design process and rely on them whenever you want to validate some design hypothesis. If you like this video, please subscribe and click on this tiny bell icon so you will never miss a new video. Thank you!